All right, we got a Templar 2022. Uh, we're gonna be doing the Nibby carburetor and adjusting the back shop. So, I haven't seen any of the videos showing how to do the nibby on the Templar. And the back shot comes pretty much non-adjusted. And it'll be a whole lot easier to adjust the back shot if this air box isn't in the way. so I don't have to edit out 10 minutes of undoing four bolts that are in a horrible spot. Go ahead and relate to some people about how you end up with a Templar cheap dirt bike, Amazon or whatever you want to call it. It's pretty simple. You get a bonus at work and your wife says, buy yourself something you wouldn't normally get. And you sit on the couch for 15 minutes and find out that they have a dirt bike for under $2,000. Do you need a dirt bike? Nah. Did you want a dirt bike prior to getting on the internet 15 minutes ago? Nah. But, you have a bonus and you're the type of guy that when you need something you buy it anyways and at no other point in time would you buy a dirt bike except for if you had a few grand to spend on something that you wouldn't normally spend it on and then you end up with a Chinese dirt bike truth be told it's really not that bad You're not going to impress anybody with it. But if you want to ride around, have some fun, it handles really well. Uh, surprisingly well for how cheap it is. It feels good. It feels sturdy. It's just missing a little bit of power. First and second gear, you could stand it up. But I mean, after that, it's pretty just, pretty much just getting through the gears to get whatever speed you want to get to. On a side note, I live in Louisiana. And I think from what the DMV said, since about 2016, it hasn't been legal to register a off-road dirt bike to get the license plate. So, if you don't want to go through the hassle of sending it in and, and doing the paperwork through South Dakota, because that's a fairly easy process. And if 
you want to know how to do it, I can explain it. But if you don't want to go through the process of registering it through South Dakota, something like that, then you probably just shouldn't get the one with all the, I think it's called the Titan. It doesn't have the blinkers, it's just the off-road version. Because, uh, yeah, both states won't allow you to register it anyways. But that being said, people have. You just do it as a non-resident through South Dakota. They send you a license plate in the mail and it's pretty much pretty much your address where you live, but you have a South Dakota license plate and the title says South Dakota. Do with that information what you want. Hire the site. Should have just got the one without all the electrical on it. That way I wouldn't just be less to you know fail potentially. Anyways, if you have friends that all ride with KTMs, Hondas, Yamahas, whatever, and you think you're gonna fit in with them, yeah, that's not gonna happen. It's heavier, slower, everything you would expect from having a $2,000 bike. But if you're somebody like me, dad, that just wants to kind of ride around on the property, maybe go ride some back roads, it's perfectly fine. Handling great, drive great. There's nothing wrong with it. You just, you're gonna run out of fun really quick if you're riding with people that have double the horsepower, which is, probably right about what it is. I think this has, I probably, probably lying, but it's probably around 16 horsepower, where a uh, Honda or Kaw uh, Kawasaki, KTM, whatever, all have about 32 to 40 horsepower. I know that this nibby carburetor isn't gonna fill in that gap. The real reason I'm doing it is just because uh, with the stock carburetor, it idles horrible. Uh, cold start, you gotta mess around with it for a long time to get it to stay running. I just don't like the factory carburetor. Plus there's no adjustment but the idle adjustment. So, to me it's worth just putting in the nibby carburetor. And I'm not gonna say this is the best way or only way to do this. I'm just trying to use common sense to guide me. But I 
do think that I want to get rid of all this. I don't think it's necessary to have all this sitting around. If you're not going to be using it. So if you look uh, now, the shock is extremely accessible. So I would say whenever you want to do your shock adjustment, because I've made a couple of rounds here, it came all the way up. Uh, I've tried to fit a screwdriver in from the other side, but I, I couldn't get enough torque on it to drive it down as far as I need to. But basically this comes with wires exposed underneath the back, which I'm gonna put some heat shrink on. But if you try to pop it up inside a second gear and you use a lot of ass to try to, to help you, then this right here will get caught on the tire and pull on it. So he tranked that, zip tie it up. Probably pull it forward and zip tie it here. Once you take this off to do this, that's whenever you want to adjust your shock. You got plenty of adjustment, but I weigh about 220. So this right here, I can bounce on it and put the back tire into the fender, especially while I'm riding around. So, and I'm not doing any kind of jumping or anything. So mainly just want it to stand up and hold my weight. So, I would do all of it at the same time, which is what I'm gonna do right now. Search I did to try to find the right one, the right spanner wrench. Can't see it too well. Uh, now I'm probably in the way of it. But, uh, so even with this, see what else can I remove? We're gonna figure out what to and not to do.
Seems like we use all three of them. Might be able to get somewhere. EOR32 and the C32. Seems like that's the only way to really get it. Make some progress. But yeah, uh, for size reference, if you're looking to buy one like I was, trying to find somebody, they kind of talk about it. I'm 6'1", about 230, 220, somewhere in between there. And it uh, it rides and, and holds me pretty well. With the shock all the way unadjusted, I was still pretty much standing on the balls of my feet. It's pretty tall, taller than I expected it to be. So I imagine with some shock adjustment and my weight on the bike, I should be able to get to my tippy toes and feel a little bit more comfortable and not have the shock bottom out or the tire, I should say bottom out against the fender wheel. As everybody says, well, I'm gonna ride with sense, you know? I'm not gonna be popping wheelies and cutting corners and fishtailing in the gravel. And then you just realize that that's not gonna happen. You could uh, have your wife riding a year and a half, old daughter on the pool, and then you jump on this and start screaming fast and doing wheelies and cutting up and fishtailing and throwing grass and tearing up the yard you spent years trying to fix. I think this uh, spanner wrench set cost about, I don't know, 18 bucks on Amazon. So, pretty cheap. And fortunately, since I ordered it all at the same time, the Nibby parts and the spanner wrenches all came together, even though they don't uh, come from the same company.
losing my nuts. Also, when I got my bike in, there was a little bit of damage to the plastics from the shipping. So I contacted the email from the shipping. Because I ordered my bike through Expro from their website. I went on Amazon. Seeing that it was an item sold by Expro. Yeah, uh, seeing that it was an item sold by Expro. So I just went to Expro, ordered it through them, and uh, saved some money that way on shipping and on the bike itself. It, uh, it looks like, for what the price it is on Expro's website, is the same price that it is on. Amazon, but the price that it is on Amazon, you still have to pay shipping, and the price that it is on Expro, you don't have to pay shipping. So, if you want to save about 400 bucks, just go to the website. Seems to be a better deal. watched videos on how to do this, but it's been probably about, I don't know, three or four weeks. Uh, granted, I've done this my entire life with four wheelers and motorcycles, so it seems pretty straightforward. And I think anybody that's uh, ever tore at least one or two carburetors apart, the they could probably do this without having to do this video at all. But some people don't know which parts to order, and I still don't know if the parts I order are the perfectly the correct ones. But it just seems like the 32, I think is what it is, is the right one to go with. So that's what this video is about. So either you're going to watch me fail or succeed, but you get to do it in real time. too much gas all over the place, but I'd rather do it on the outside of the bike. That way I can put a bucket.
train out. Bad little carburetor, but there's really not much to it. And like I said, being that there's really no adjustments on it, we'll go ahead and compare the two. This is going to be the cold air intake. This was one of the questions I had, but nobody could answer. Is if this is going to make the turn and not rub against the shock. So that's one thing we're gonna figure out. Two, is this part right here, is gonna be the manifold mounting bracket that goes against the top end. And have a slight curve. We're gonna see if that fits and see if that is the right diameter to fit on the Nibby, which all comes together. And finally, so this comes with a little manual, which it's got some specs and stuff on it, but it's pretty much useless. Uh, we've got some different ports High speed, low speed. And then it comes with some stickers in the bottom, which I'm not gonna use. And that's pretty much the difference. It's pretty much the same size inlet, so don't think you're gonna be getting too much difference. Now the port is a little bit of a different size. It seems like The port that goes to the manifold is the same size. So this is the 32, I believe, which has a 49 millimeter uh, intake. And I'll show you. This looks like it's the same size. So the air filter will fit on the stock one. Here side, the air filter will fit on the nibby. And I'm about to see, just to try it, to see if this won't just mount up straight to the inlet that's already on there. And maybe you don't need to order the manifold. So let's see. probably avoid doing that. What will be the real question is uh, if it has enough angle to get the air filter on it. And it looks like it might be not.
looks like that's a no-go, but you may better just go back straight to your stop. So I'm gonna figure that out. And once I figure out what I'm gonna do, I'll go ahead and record the rest of this.